welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Dan Lee and I'm a wooden boat builder and in this series of videos I'm building a quarter scale version of a boat called Temptress. If you've not come across Temptress before, it is the first all new wooden boat that we've designed and kitted as part of my uh, boat building plan sets. So Temptress started out life as a design by Michelle Berrier in the 90s and when Michelle showed me the design I completely fell in love with it and said we've got to do something with that. People are going to love that boat and really want to build one. So what happened is Michelle then decided to completely rework the design from the ground up but based on the styling of the original boat. And that's what we ended up with. So Temptress is a 24 foot runabout powered by an Ilmore 5.3 litre GDI engine and at that she'll run 50 miles an hour on a modernized hull with classic period wooden boat styling. So at quarter scale, I can build the boat exactly as you would build the real full size thing. And that's the idea behind this series is that I can give you a walkthrough of the entire process of building the boat and um, show you it in as much detail as possible. That's what we're doing here. So in the previous videos, we did some of the laminations. We did the stem and the two main stringers that run through the boat, which you can see here. In this video, we're going to start to put some of those stringers in place and do the various things that um, are needed with the assembly to get it ready to install the stringers. We're going to notch the stringers for one of the frames so you can see the process of doing that. But first up, we need to make a couple more frames because there were a few missing from the uh, assembly last time. So let's get started with that first. So frame nine, we've got all that built. We've got the bulkhead fixed to the back side of it. And um, we're gonna take a look at one of the little workarounds that we've discovered within this plans. So the issue that we have with frame nine is that when it comes to putting our strong back legs on, we've got one strong back leg down here and our other one is hiding underneath there somewhere. So how are we gonna get around that? So it's actually not too bad. What we're gonna do is just lift up the frame turn it over we're going to transpose our um, dowel alignment holes through or at least some of the dowel alignment holes we don't need all of them because the frame is now constructed to a pretty complete state we probably only realistically need four so i'm going to do the two up here in the deck beam and two down there in the keel gusset Okay, so to get our strong back legs placed, what we're gonna do is put a short dowel in the strong back leg hole. And then we're actually gonna position our strong back legs first on the board. So we're gonna put them up to the strong back leg dowel. And then I'm gonna just put some masking tape on this just to pin it in place so it doesn't move at all. And then with some longer dowels through the frame, we can position this in place. So I'm going to use my drill bits for that. Okay, so that's allowed me to position my legs, get the uh, frame in place, and now we can screw the um, strong back legs to the bulkhead and we're ready to go. So I've got to credit Bob Cody for coming up with that little workaround. He's building a full size version of this boat at the moment. And if you haven't already uh, seen his channel, take a look at that and you can see his progress with building a full size Temptress. I'll put the link up at the top of the screen so you can check it out if you want to. So let's get those screwed on and then we'll get it into the strong back. Okay, so we've got a full set of frames made. 
and positioned roughly in the strong back. At the moment, I haven't set any of the heights of these. You remember we looked at, uh, at that process in the previous video, so we're going to uh, set these up on a laser line, all of these waterline one marks, and that will get our frames all at the correct height throughout the strong back system. We're not quite ready to do that just yet. Um, so we're going to take a look at the next stage in the process. And that stage is going to be to install our stringers. So if you remember when we were building frames, I talked about the, uh, the fact that the bulkheads don't want to be glued to the frames right now. They just want to be dry fitted. And now is the time when you'll get to see the reasoning for that. So we've got our stringers over there that we did in the last video. So two laminated stringers, and these are all marked up for our frame positions. So you can see where they're going to get notched. And you can see the beginnings of how that process is going to work. So we've got cutouts in each of the bulkheads for stringers, but we haven't got cutouts in the frames. So what happens with this boat is that the stringers drop down into the bulkheads and then the frames drop down into the stringers. So the, the stringers get notched so that these frames stay full thickness. The stringers get notched and the frames will drop down into them. So the first thing that we're going to need to do in the process of getting all of this set up in the boat is to separate the bulkheads and the frames. So any frame that we've got that's got a bulkhead on, we're going to split these two apart and we're going to leave just the bulkheads only in the boat assembly. So that is the reasoning for the strong back legs being attached to the bulkheads because they need to be able to be installed in this whole setup without the frames. And any frames that don't have bulkheads on them, such as these aft here, 10 through to 13 in the transom, we're just going to take them out of the mix for now. So I'm going to get to prepping all of that stuff and then we'll, uh, we'll have a look at it when it's stripped down. So that's what we're looking for in the assembly right now. We've got bulkheads only. The forward frames can stay put because as you can see, the stringer actually terminates here at frame two. It doesn't go right through the framing. It just goes up and through the bulkhead. So we can leave that as is. Frame one isn't touched, so that can stay there. And um, we've got the stem in there as well. So, um, just bulkheads, that's what we want. And then we're gonna drop the stringers down into those. So the first job to do is gonna to be to get those all properly leveled. You can see I've got a laser level set up here at the moment and our waterline one marks are all over the shop. So the first thing we need to do is get all of the frames set up uh, nice and true to that waterline one mark. So you can see we've got most frames set up now. And we're just breaking that waterline one mark right through the middle of the laser on either side of the frame. And that's how we know that we've got everything perfectly square and at the correct height throughout the boat. Now, once you've got a handful of frames set up like this, um, there's gonna be the odd occasion where you're gonna have to move the laser because you start to cast shadows with various legs. So you can see I've got one frame around this far side. This one here where I just, I can't quite see if um, my laser's 
if my line's in the correct position there, so I'm gonna have to just shift the laser. But because we've got so many things referencing that now, um, we can use that to then reset the laser. So I can move the laser, it's over, over there on the corner of the bench at the moment. I can move that around to this side of the bench, reposition the laser height to match what's on this side, and then um, we can uh, do any other measurements that we need to do again. So you can see now I've shifted it. It's dropped down a little bit low, so we're just gonna position something underneath this, bring it up to match the lines that are existing, and then I'll be able to check that one final line on uh, frame seven there. Okay, so if you remember in the previous video, what I did was um, with all of these legs, I've marked the water line all the way around the timber. So we've got that line on all faces. Now that works for most of the frames because they're all sat in a vertical plane and that water line is the same on all faces. Uh, frame nine differs from that slightly because we're on an angle here and that water line is marked from when the frame is um, perpendicular to the frame construction board. We actually, if we were to square that around, we would end up with a line that's pointing downwards now that the frame is leaning forwards. And what that would do is create some confusion because we'd have different heights. So the height of the frame would differ based on which part of that line you put through the, um, through the laser. So what you wanna do when you're setting the height of this frame is to reference the line that is on the mating face with the, with the bulkhead. So this is what we call our control face. This is the one that we take measurements and references from. And that's the plane where the face of the bulkhead meets the face of the strong back leg. And that is what we wanna use for our height gauge. So you can see that that's why I've drawn that line on that side of the leg and I haven't squared it all the way around. I've just gone around that corner a little touch just to give me a bit of uh, reference on that face. But you can see that that line um, obviously is level because of the laser, but in reference to the leg, it's on an angle. So hopefully that makes sense and explains the, uh, the way that frame nine needs to be set up. That's also a good benefit to shooting the laser from a position that is behind the boat uh, looking forward. So the laser is positioned aft behind the boat at the moment looking forward. And that means that we're shooting it directly onto that correct plane. If we were coming from forwards, we'd be on the lower side of that. So, um, so we're all good. So we've got all of those in place and hopefully everything's looking nice and true. And now that we've got them all leveled up properly, we can start to see the bottom of the boat take shape a little bit. We should be able to start to see the nice lines of the chines coming through and everything should be starting to look a little bit more boat-like and uh, the shape that we're actually looking for. So yeah, things are looking nice. Let's, um, let's grab a pair of stringers and drop them in, see what happens. That's quite satisfying, isn't it? Very nice. Let's take a look at what's going on. So we've got an initial dry fit of the stringers and you can see our marks here. Now these marks correspond to the solid timber framing parts of each of these components. So you can see here that that, um, that frame lies on the aft side of this bulkhead. So when that's butted up into place, that is the position of our framing. And then we've got some other ones that are just pretty much in exactly the right place. There's gonna be a little bit of moving things around at this stage because there's not a huge amount of support going on here. 
and um, as we dial in the various different elements, get the stringers in place, get the chines in place, top side battens, things like that, all of this is going to start to become a lot more defined and uh, firmly placed. So we've got that one there, you can see with this one as well, that just wants to sit there and then the framing is going to be on the forward side of it. Same as well with this, this large bulkhead at number four. So we've got a little bit of adjustment to do. Um, we're gonna have quite a bevel to do on frame nine on the bulkhead. You can see the gap on the underside there on the forward side. And that's gonna be beveled in the same way that we did the bevels on the transom support legs. So um, if you can't remember back to that, Basically anything that's beveled within this boat is beveled until the larger side of the opening touches whatever part it's going through. So obviously everything on a CNC is cut at 90 degrees typically and the cutout for this stringer here is cut at 90 degrees but it's sized so that when the far side, so this, this side round here is taken down to match the bevel of the stringer this side should be just seated. So you can see how much we've got to take the other side down by a couple of millimeters there. And once we've beveled that, the stringer should sit perfectly in that. With the rest of these, that bevel is pretty much negligible because this is like three mil ply. And these are actually quite straight transitions, certainly through these frames. Obviously frame nine's on an angle, so it's a little bit more beveling to do there. That's gonna drop that down slightly. And then when we get up forward as well, these frames, because of the curvature here, are going to bevel ever so slightly as well. But not a great deal. I think we're a little bit low on the thickness of the string lamination. As you can see here, these stringers should be in full contact with the bottom of the boat when we've beveled everything. And we're a little bit low on some of these cutouts here. So I don't know if I've done my calculations on the stringer thickness a little bit wrong, um, but we're gonna need to add probably another full lamination onto that. And that's not a problem actually, there's plenty of rigidity within this lamination at the moment for us to be able to add another layer on. And um, we can do that at this stage. We could actually take these back out, put another lamination on and uh, machine them back flush. Or we can do that a little bit further down the line when um, when it comes to actually fairing the bottom of the boat. I think I'll probably do this now because it's easy enough for me to pull these out and just run them through the machine again and get them flush. So um, I'll do that before I commit to gluing them into the boat. But uh, first of all, let's take a little look at what stage comes next with regards to um, putting the solid framing back in on top of this uh, arrangement that we've got here. Okay, so we've got all of the bulkheads leveled and correctly set up at their finished heights on waterline one. We've then dropped the stringers down into the bulkheads, which means that the stringers are now positioned where they need to be with reference to the top face, so the inside face in the boat when they're installed. Now what we need to do is to get the frames and we need to put the frames onto the stringers. So what happens is the stringers get notched and the frames come down from the top. So we've got bulkheads coming up from the bottom and going around the stringer. We've got frames coming down from the top and cutting through the stringer, so getting notched into it. So now what we wanna do is to, uh, is to mark those notch cutouts. So we're gonna get frame eight, and this is a nice easy one to start with because it's an open topped frame, which means we can just drop it in from the top. Some of the framing that we've got, which is closed top with a deck beam that goes all the way around, we're gonna to have to do a process of threading that through um, various different other frames and um, loading it onto the stringers in a bit more of a uh, complex way. We'll get to that in a bit. We'll start with a nice easy one. So what we're gonna do is to drop frame eight onto here and then we want this to be centered um, as well in this position. And the way that I'm gonna center that up is just by using the keel cut out here and just aligning the two of those. We haven't gotta be absolutely bang on at the moment, but um, you know, just doing that by eye is close enough really. 
And then when we look around this side of the frame, we can see the bevel that we need to, uh, to create. So because the frame is on an angle, it's gonna come through this stringer at an angle. So obviously the frame, the solid frame is too high at the moment. We need to drop it back down until it lines back up with the bulkhead here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is measure how far down we need to go with the frame. And I'm gonna do that at the keel line here. So the difference in the bulkhead and the frame is around about 14 millimeters. So we need to come down with that frame 14 millimeters. So on this side of the, uh, the stringers, we're gonna project the lines from the, uh, the top face of this frame down. So you can see where I'm measuring 14 millimeters from, is from the underside of this frame here where it intersects with the stringer. Okay, so we've got our notch heights marked on the inside and the outside of both of our stringers. Now, with the full size boat, you're gonna be notching these probably on the boat to keep all of this in place. You'd have enough rigidity here to be able to cut this with a saw um, and just chisel these out in situ. You don't really wanna be loading these stringers in and out the boat constantly because they're probably gonna be a two man lift. They're gonna be pretty hefty on the full size thing. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm just gonna pull these out um, so I can just notch it on the bench, show you in good detail exactly what's going on with that notch, and then we'll put it back in, we'll drop that frame in, and we'll see what everything looks like. So let's whip those out. Okay, so now that we're fully marked up, this is what we look like. So we've got our frame width markers all the way around the stringer, and then you can see our little tick marks that we did there that we took off the increased height of the frame. So we, uh, we had the frame 14 mil too high, and then we've marked these lines 14 mil down from the face of that frame, so that we know that when we drop it down into the stringer by that much, we're gonna have the uh, correct fit with the bottom. So what we wanna be doing is to remove this section here We're gonna notch out that little piece of uh, material and then uh, try our frame in position again, see how we get on. Okay, so I'm gonna begin by just starting a cut on this stringer. And I wanna keep myself nice and uh, parallel to those lines on all faces. So you can see that initially what I've done is I've just started the cut on that corner. That's a really nice controlled way to begin cutting a notch like this. And I've cut down to the height line on the first side and I've cut part way through across the top. So what I'll do now is the same thing on the other side. So I'll cut down to meet this, this outer depth mark and then I'll join the two up and then we'll chisel the middle section out. Okay, so I've cut my two height lines. You can see they follow all the way around and they meet the, uh, the lower height on the uh, inside edge of the stringer. And then this higher one on the outside edge of the stringer. So we'll chisel out that middle section and that'll be that notch done. Okay, so when I'm chiseling this out, I'm gonna start on the side that uh, has more material. Because if I start on this lower side and I chisel straight through, um, I'm probably going to break out too low down on the second side. So we're going to start with the, uh, the lower one, 
probably chisel straight through, break all that material out, and then we'll, we'll just finish in the bevel on that. I'll just knock out some material. So you can see what I've done there is knocked that through pretty much square, which means we're the correct depth on this side. We're a little bit out on this side. So now I can just start working that across. And there's a number of ways I can do that. I can actually do some additional cuts to help to remove the middle material, or I can just work it out with a chisel. I'll probably do a couple of extra little cuts actually, because that, um, that'll get us there quite quickly. Okay, so there's our first notch cut. You could probably use the edge of a file or something like a rasp if you're working on a full size boat, if you can fit something in there and cut on the edge of that. That's gonna help you to clean up that face really nicely. It's quite fiddly on this kind of scale, but it's certainly doable. So um, I'll do that on the second stringer. We'll put them back in the boat and we'll see what we've got. Okay, so that's what we're looking... <laughs> Hang on a minute. Okay, so that's what we're looking to arrive at. We wanna be dropping our frame down from the top side into those notches and arriving back in line with the bulkhead. So this is the reason that we pair the bulkhead to the frame uh, beforehand. So we wanna make sure that the screw holes that are tying the two together line back up and we've got that um, that solid wood frame component back down at its correct height <clears throat> and um, centered the thwart chips as well. And the way that I've done, done that to get it in the center is basically just by eye lining it with this uh, keel cutout. It's actually quite a handy way of, uh, of centering the two back together. You'll see that this will move from side to side, this frame within that notch, but we want to uh, find a nice central portion where the two line back up. And there's probably going to be a lot of adjustment needed as you put these in and out of the boat. But the good thing with this is you can just pop this frame out, sit it on the stringers up there. You can make a little adjustment. I did do a couple of adjustments with this, just using a, uh, a ruler with a bit of sandpaper wrapped around it. Because I'm working with such tiny notches here, these notches are only six mil wide. Um, I didn't have a file or anything that would fit in there, but um, a little file, or if, even if you've got a shoulder plane actually um, on the full size boat, obviously, these frames are going to be nearly 22 mil thick. So you could get a nice little shoulder plane in there and just dress up the uh, bottom face of that notch really nice and neatly. So there we go. That is the process for notching the stringers for the first frame, frame number eight. As I said, that's one of the easier ones. Some of these that have got ring frames, they're going to have to actually be threaded onto the stringers. So we're going to have to be lifting those up and feeding it over other frames in order to get them in place. So there's going to be a bit of a uh, sequential process to this. To, um, to get things in the right order. It's gonna get a little bit fiddly then, but um, as we start to dial some of these elements in, the boat's gonna start to get a lot firmer and, um, and really start to come together, which would be nice. Now you can see on this, um, on this stringer that I definitely am under height. So this 
should be running right to the bottom of the boat with stringer and um, this is going to be beveled to take the bottom plank in so you can see here I'm at least a full lamination short on this stringer not entirely sure how I've ended up doing that I must have just uh, made an error of my calculations in converting the um, total laminations to what I've got here so what I'm going to do is get another lamination glued up on top of these two stringers so we've got enough thickness there. I think it makes sense to do it now and get the edges of the stringers cleaned up nicely. Then we can cut all of our notches and um, I'll be able to show you how we finish at the correct depth for um, all of the frames. So just before I tie things up, I want to just uh, say a quick note about the model plans because I know a lot of people are really keen to build one of these as a model. Just to let you know, I am working on a set of model plans. They're going to differ slightly from these um, because these have almost, I think, got too much detail for somebody that's wanting to build um, one of these boats. A few people have talked about doing an RC version of the boat. This would be really cool to do. Um, so I'd love to see that happen. Um, so here's a heads up, I am working on the plans and as soon as they're ready and launched, I'll give you the heads up and uh, let you know when they're ready to buy. So what I'm gonna do is leave it there for this video. I'm gonna get some extra laminations glued up on those stringers. And then in the next video, we'll look at doing the notches uh, in all the other frames and I'll show you how they differ slightly from the first one that we've done. So hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers guys.